Today, good oral hygiene is an accepted part of almost every person's daily routine. But how did someone get the idea that putting straws on a stick make your teeth healthy? Humans have been cleaning their teeth for thousands of years. The earliest known tool to do so was the Babylonian chew sticks from 3500 BC. Such chew sticks are still in use today. In fact, it is an important practice in the Islamic world where it is considered a pious action. Where it is used for various moments such as before praying, traveling or sleeping. The Greeks and Romans used toothpicks to clean their teeth. In fact, they are still common today in Africa. But these were chew sticks and toothpicks and not actual tooth brushes. So where did they appear in history? They were first invented in China in the 7th century and were made from coarse hairs of hogs living in Siberia and northern China. These hogs evolved very stiff hair in response to the harsh climate, yielding sturdy bristles. Tiny holes were then inserted in a bone or in bamboo. Then the hairs were inserted in those holes and could be used similarly to how toothbrushes are used today. The toothbrush eventually made its way from China into Europe a thousand years later. But the English found the hog hair too rough. And while toothbrushes were being imported from China, most people cleaned their teeth using rags rolled in salt or soot. But for the next revolution in toothbrush technology, we have to go to prison. To a man named William Addis. Born in 1734, he sold finished paper goods to London's booksellers. These booksellers were not only the main supplier of books at the time, but also of medicine. In 1770, Addis was thrown in prison for inciting a riot. There he was, with plenty of time on his hand and a foul smelling mouth. So Addis decided that a rag was ineffective. He got a bone left over from dinner and drilled small holes into it. In the holes, he inserted bristles, much like the Chinese, which he got from a sympathetic jailer. And so Addis created the first modern toothbrush. At first, he only used the toothbrush for personal use. But in the late 18th century, people started eating more and more refined sugar. And as people ate, their teeth decayed. The only cure was to remove your teeth. And so Addis saw potential in the market. And he showed all his clients the toothbrush and made a small fortune. Addis Enterprise grew into a prosperous business, earning him a fortune. And upon his death, his son took over. And to this day, his company still makes toothbrushes. But now under a new name, Wisdom Toothbrushes. And they produce 70 million toothbrushes per year in the United Kingdom. And funnily enough, although you can read on their website about how their founder invented toothbrushes, they casually gloss over the fact it was invented in prison. If you want to read more about it, there is a link in the description. But the next big innovation in toothbrush technology took another 100 years. But it was the revolution which saw the rise of the toothbrush we use today. You see, up until the 20th century, bone and bristle remained the primary resources of a toothbrush. But everything changed with the invention of synthetic fibers such as nylon. Nylon was far less likely to grow harmful bacteria than traditional animal hair and far easier to use. But a toothbrush still had one major flaw. It was difficult to reach the back teeth, so the bristles were placed on an angled head. Then they concentrated the bristles more closely to clean each tooth of cavity causing materials. The outer bristles were made longer and softer in order to better clean between your teeth. And now we have arrived at the modern toothbrush. From chew sticks, to prison, to the synthetic toothbrush we use today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've ever wondered about other medical history, watch my video on the history of amputations.